AQA, A-Level Physics. This is on the uh, Thermal Physics playlist. Uh, and this is Kinetic Theory Part 1. I'm going to do three videos on Kinetic Theory. So this bit of the specification is what we're going to be looking at now. So what is Kinetic Theory? Well, it's a load of balls is what it is. Uh, it's a mathematical model which represents an ideal gas. And basically what we say is that a gas, an ideal gas, is lots and lots of tiny elastic particles moving randomly, banging against the walls of the container, causing pressure. And that is what kinetic theory is. Uh, and in one of the other videos, we're going to look at it mathematically and derive some equations. Uh, it's a very powerful model because it actually explains the behavior of gases and it can predict the behavior of gases as well. So kinetic theory is a mathematical model of a gas. And in this model, we assume that the ideal gas is made of lots of little balls bouncing around in a box. That's what kinetic theory is. Now, is there any evidence that gases are made up of lots and lots of tiny little particles? I mean, we take this for granted now, you know, because you've been taught it in school for years and years. But the, the first evidence that gases were made up of little particles is called Brownian motion. Uh, in 1827, this Scottish guy, Robert Brown, uh, with his microscope, he was looking at pollen grains in water and he saw that the pollen grains were jiggling about. They were disco dancing and he didn't understand why he couldn't explain it. Or at least he didn't explain it correctly. Um, you hopefully will get a chance to see uh, smoke. If you look at smoke particles in air, and the smoke particles jiggle around as well. Just do a do a, a YouTube search for Brownie in motion and you'll see it. OK, hopefully you'll get to see it in real life. But it's direct evidence that gases are made up of lots of tiny particles moving very quickly. Tiny because we can see the smoke particles, but we can't see air molecules moving very very quickly because the striking against the smoke particle which is maybe a thousand times bigger and heavier than they are and making it move so they must be moving very fast and there must be lots and lots of them moving randomly that's brownian motion now the gas laws remember the gas laws in the last video and we can explain the gas laws mathematically but also just uh, qualitatively which is what I'm going to do now the gas laws can be explained using this model so first of all what causes pressure in a gas well all of these particles colliding with the walls yeah they bang into the walls of the container and in these collisions their momentum changes there's a change in momentum and hopefully you remember Newton's second law Basically, force is proportional to rate of change of momentum, F equals delta mv over t, if you like. So every time there's a collision, there's a force acting on the wall. And then the average force divided by the surface area is the pressure of the gas. That's what causes pressure in a gas. Now, the pressure law says that the higher the temperature, the bigger the pressure. Now, why? Because at a higher temperature, the particles have got more kinetic energy, so they are moving faster. Uh, because they are moving faster, the change in momentum, delta mv, in every collision will be greater, uh, and there will be more collisions per second. Because if you like, it'll, it'll take less time for a particle to get there and back and collide again. So, the total change in momentum per second will be greater and therefore the pressure will be greater. OK, now very important. This question here, explain in terms of the motion of the particles why the pressure in this car tire will increase when it is warmer. And if you get this question, 
and there'll be loads of marks for it. What you do is you regurgitate that and that and you'll get lots and lots of marks. Explain what causes pressure in a gas and also explain why the pressure gets bigger at a higher temperature and remember there are two reasons for that. Okay. Less common is to get asked to explain this, uh, the volume law. Okay, why does the volume increase with temperature? If you imagine this is a, a piston and the piston can move up and down and we've got a gas in there. Now on the left, the uh, pressure in the gas is due to the weight of the piston and atmospheric pressure. And it is on the other one as well. So the pressure is the same. Now, what will happen if we heat up the gas, if we give it, if we give the particles kinetic energy, then uh, there will be a bigger force acting on the piston initially. But then as the piston moves upwards, the pressure will get less until it's the same as it was before. OK, I'll read what I've written in both diagrams. The pressure is the same because it's atmospheric pressure and the weight of the piston. Now, if we increase the temperature of the gas, the particles move faster, so they exert a bigger force on the piston, pushing it upwards. As the distance gets bigger, the particles will hit the piston less often. OK, eventually a state will be reached where the pressure is the same, will reach an equilibrium. As I said, they don't generally ask this question. It's more to do with the pressure law. But if it does come up, we can answer it. We can explain why the volume gets bigger with temperature. And lastly, Boyle's law, which is pretty much the same thing. OK, uh, if the temperature is the same, if we make the pressure bigger, the volume gets smaller. Here we are increasing the pressure of the gas. And basically the particles hit the piston more often as the volume decreases and again will reach a, an equilibrium volume where the two pressures are the same.